Hello everybody. This is how to save rock. My mid-rock crisis with East Coast feet. You know, a while back, I had a job in a library shelving books. Uh, I got into a conversation with another employee and we were talking about music. My favorite subjects, obviously. Um, sometimes we like, well, so who's your best band? He said, Echo and the Bunny Man. Why? Well, my research has not revealed the origin or the purpose of this band's name. Any help? Ian McCulloch, Will Sargent, Lee Pattison, and Pete DeFreitas, English art rockers, 1978. These guys are not meant for buds and slam dancing. No. no. In 1980, their album Crocodiles was a post-punk, dark, moody, sans guitar noodling, animalistic sexual energy, a nihilistic thrill ride. Pictures on my wall and rescue previously released singles debut made the top 20. In 81 there, heaven up here, dour, anguish, and despair. An anti-new punk statement, confident two car chord drones, a promise and over the wall. Rolling Stone magazine included the album in the 500 greatest albums of all time list. Echo influenced by the Velvet Underground. 1983, Porcupine. Hit song, The Cutter, Back of Love, made it Rockfield Studio. The sleeve art shot was done in Iceland. In 84, Ocean Rain, the single The Killing Moon, Silver. Bunnies always have thoughtful and aesthetic sleeve art that's suitable for framing. In 87, Echo and the Bunnyman album. McCulloch left, replaced by Noel Burke. A motorcycle accident took DeFreitas. The singles were The Game and Lips Like Sugar. In 90, Reverberation. More psychedelic, less psychotic. It took a break for seven years. Their precedent was unclear now, with the bandmates dwindling. This was no competition for Seattle sound bands. It was like apples and oranges. In 97, Cullet turned. Redo band released the album Evergreen. Went to the top 10. Recorded at Doghouse Studios. Singles, Nothing Lasts Forever. I want to be there and don't let it get you down. In 99, what are you guys doing with your life? This is the album name. Les Pattison left, two bunnies remain. Session musicians and orchestra brought in to finish the album. Rust and Get in the Car were the most significant tracks on that one. In 2001, they signed to Warner and released Flowers. Songs It's All Right and Make Me Shine. It was looking like bands who flourished in the 90s had little staying power for the new millennium. Brit pop bands would scurry to find their place in a more optimistic landscape. In 2005, their album Siberia, Stormy Weather and Scissors in the Sand. It did not chart seemed like a bland, middle-of-the-road attempt 
In 2009, The Fountain drew mixed reviews, either a nod to the future or a last gasp. I think I need it too. This album is only a faint echo of what a post-punk band needed to be, and that is not mainstream. 2014, Meteorites. This album charted, went to number 37. Band now described as Scouse veterans, five years off helped refocus, but this album turned out to be their swan song. 2018, The Stars, The Ocean, and The Moon a compilation. These guys win the Sleeve Art Consistency Award. I've never seen them play, but I will if I can. Sadly, their heyday has come and gone. Thanks for being with me. Let's save rock. Save it by keeping these guys in our minds and in our TVs. How we do it nowadays, right? Um, please uh, hit subscribe. You have no idea how much it will help me to continue to put these shows on. I'm not monetizing. It's just I need more people. And I'll, I'll keep going one way or the other, so. You might have noticed I'm doing bands that aren't particularly bands I don't like. That's on purpose. I'm trying to be upbeat and positive for the most part. Sometimes I wonder if I did bands that I didn't like, if I'd draw more subscriptions and uh, likes and so forth. I'm not a nice thing to say about the internet, I guess. Well, anyway, you know what you need to do. And I really appreciate you guys out there. See you next time.